Anybody who has ever worked at a fast food restaurant overnight knows just how unique some patrons can be. To add another variable to this already great combination, I worked at a 24-hour McDonald's that was directly off an exit, so it was a frequent stop for truckers, cops, drunks, and anybody looking to get hot food in the middle of the night. As you would expect, I met countless characters that I could describe. I could write a book about every strange and unique human I met while working at that job. I've even had some wild experiences with people who decided to have an all-out brawl right in the middle of the restaurant, but none of these experiences were scary, just crazy to witness, I guess. Only once in the two years that I worked at the restaurant did I experience something that really indeed horrified me. That night started like most nights that I did the overnight shift. I got there at 10, and it was extremely slow. It was always really slow at that time, and then you would get a rush from about 11.30pm to 1.30am, and then depending on the day, it would be sporadic throughout the night. On this night, I was hoping for a slow night. It was just one of those days when I was not feeling it at all. My car wouldn't start in the morning, and my husband tried to figure it out, but unfortunately, cars aren't his strong suit, so I was without a car. On top of that, I felt so under the weather. It happens to me every fall season. I felt like a house fell on me and I just wanted to get under a blanket and pass out, but unfortunately, I got bills to pay. So unless I was extremely sick, calling in was not an option. Thankfully, I was able to take my husband's Silverado truck to work. A little after 2am, my coworker and I were just hanging out. I ended up getting my wish with it being slow. That night was one of the slowest nights I could remember working. Eventually, my coworker went into the office to do some paperwork. I think that was an excuse to go take a nap or something, but I didn't have the energy to call him out. When I was alone at the counter, listening to YouTube on my phone, I heard the bell from the door. It was a peculiar looking man. He wasn't an old man, but he wasn't young either, maybe mid-forties if I had to guess. He looked homeless, but not grungy and dirty, more like he was just not put together right. He was shorter than me, but I'm tall for a woman. He couldn't have weighed more than 130 pounds even with his big winter coat on. As he slowly approached the counter, I asked, Hey there, sir. What can I get you tonight? The man just looked at me and smiled. I wish I could have a picture of that moment. The look that he was giving me made me so unsettled. Something about the way he looked at me was just not right, and it gave me the creeps before he even spoke. His eyes were so dark that they looked almost black, and... His mouth was just open enough with his smile that I could see his yellow teeth. Finally, he spoke after what seemed like an outrageous amount of time and I was surprised at the deep southern voice that came out of this little man and he said, Wow, aren't you gorgeous? I thought I wanted fries, but maybe I'll order something else. Yeah. So I know that's weird and creepy, but working this graveyard shift at a restaurant that gets a lot of customers who are under the influence, I'm used to weird attempts at flirting. So I just smiled and said very politely, Okay, sir, well, when you know what you want, just let me know. The man now grinned from ear to ear, flashing his full set of yellow and gray teeth. He set his hands on the counter and all I could see were his long and dirty fingernails. Trying not to look visibly disgusted, he spoke up again and said, Forget the fries. What time are you done? Usually something like this, I would just smile and say I'm married and move on with my life, but I don't know if it was because I didn't feel good or maybe because the guy gave me the creeps from the start, but instead, in an annoyed and aggressive voice, I responded with, If you don't want to order any food, you can leave. The man started to laugh as if though I told him a great joke. Before I said or did something that I would regret, I turned around and started knocking on the office door. When my coworker opened the door, he could tell that I was visibly shaken. I told him about the creepy guy who was clearly in sight, and he smirked because he knew right away what I was dealing with. He told me to go take a break and that he would take care of the guy. Without even thinking or looking back, I grabbed my coat and went outside, sat in my husband's truck for 15 minutes and just listened to music. I had almost forgotten about that creep up until right before I went back inside. I noticed him wandering on the far side of the parking lot with a to-go bag in his hands. I was relieved that my coworker was able to get rid of him and I decided to wait in the truck for another five minutes just in case. I didn't want this creep to see what vehicle mine was. When I finally got back inside, my coworker looked a little freaked out. 
I asked him about the interaction with that freak and his answer just really freaked me out. He said in a tentative voice, I don't know if I should tell you. I started to jokingly hit his arm and I told him to tell me, to which he complied and he said, That guy was crazy. When I came out to take his order, he just kept asking where the girl was. So I told him that you went home for the night and he started to lose his mind, screaming and swearing. I ended up just giving him a free medium fry just to shut him up and get him out of here. Then he turned around and as he was walking out, he said, Tell Monica I said goodbye and I'll see her soon. This little story almost made me faint, mainly because I don't wear a name tag at this job. I had no earthly idea how this man knew my name. For the remainder of the shift, I couldn't focus. I just kept looking over at the door expecting this man to stumble back in, but thankfully, he never did. Close to 4.30 in the morning, I asked if I could leave early. He knew that I wasn't feeling well, and with the creepy guy on my mind, he knew that I just needed to get away. Just to make my night more enjoyable, as I was leaving it started to snow and it was the first truly hard snowfall of the season, even though fall basically just started. I was thankful to have my husband's truck once again and I figured if I just took it slow I'd be safe. I couldn't have been more wrong. Only about a half mile from work I ended up driving into a ditch because I couldn't see the road from the snow falling. I was alright and it didn't seem like too much damage, but I couldn't get myself out of the ditch. I called police and surprisingly the cops were there in about a minute. I got out of the truck to greet the cop and that's when it happened. From the bed of the truck, the man from the restaurant jumped out and started to run full speed into the night. I screamed and then was at a loss for words. The cop didn't know what to do and started to yell at me to tell him what was going on. I finally told him and he radioed some other cops but they never caught him. We eventually went back to the restaurant and I gave the police my entire story. They looked at the cameras, but it wasn't enough to ever actually catch the guy. The worst part was watching the video of the guy getting into the bed of the truck. It was no more than ten minutes after my break. He came storming back into the parking lot with the food bag still in his hands. He looked around for a few minutes, tried the door, and when it was locked, he just jumped into the back. I'm so lucky I drove into a ditch that night because if I hadn't, who knows what would have happened to me. The bag was left in the back of the truck with the fries still in it. This guy never even wanted the food. He knew my name from the start and he knew when I worked and he knew the vehicle that I would have. This happened several years ago and I'm still not quite ready to work overnights again. Always lock your doors and please be careful. Some people really are monsters. If you enjoyed this scary story, listen to thousands more, either over on the Let's Read YouTube channel or podcast.